Hello again, uh, this is just another absolute beginner tutorial. Uh, this time it's going to be based around Netcat. Uh, I'm just going to explain a few of its basic features. Uh, you can read all the uh, the detailed info at my blog, which is in a link in the description of the video. And also in that description is a link to the download for Netcat for Windows as well if you haven't already got it. Now basically you'll have heard Netcat dubbed the Swiss Army Knife of Security. This is pretty much because it's a very powerful tool. Uh, it's a raw tool and it's got some amazing features. Uh, it just pretty much does about everything really. Um, but like I've said I'm just going to cover the basics. Um, it can be used for port scanning and banner grabbing, um, but I'm not going to show you that today because uh, I've got another video on Nmap uh, which you should check out. Um, it shows you the basics of that, and Nmap is, I think, better suited to that kind of work anyway. So, without further ado, we'll crack on <coughs> and I'll show you some of the basic features. So, basically, what I'm going to show you first is probably. Netcat's most simplest feature, and that's just emulate a chat session between two two computers. So for this, I'm running Windows XP and backtrack in a VMware environment. So let's get started. The first first task we have to do is open a port and say listening. This can be quite easily achieved. Again, like I said, don't worry about all the syntax. It's all explained in my blog. And it'll make this a lot easier. But basically, what we've just typed in here is we've just asked Netcat to open a port on 10,000 and listen for incoming connections, which it's doing. As you can see, listening on any. Now, here we'll just connect to that port. IP address. and the PAR number. And as you can see nothing much happens, it just tells you there's a connection. But as you can see, hello. As you can see that appears both ends. Are you getting this? I'll show you, you can do it the other way as well. Yes, I am. And you'll see that in a minute when it pops up. There you go. Yes, I am. So basically all that's doing is reading and writing data to and from each other. Uh, as mentioned, probably Netcat's simplest, simplest form. So minimise that. Clear that. There we go. Right, so next we're going to use it for transferring files. You can transfer files quite easily. Um, the only problem I found is you've got to guess when it's actually transferred it. Obviously, it's got no um, fancy progress bars or anything like that. You know, you've just got to guess. So, if you're transferring a big file, obviously, it's, it's a lot of guesswork. But a small file, which we're going to do, shouldn't take too long. So, in in this backtrack machine we're just going to create a simple text file with the word sample text oops too many X's there sample text and we're going to call it sent text because we're sending it there we go right, so same as before open a part to listen on but we need to create somewhere to actually receive this so the same way using the, the greater than I call it operator the create file will create somewhere for this to go and we'll call it received text because we're receiving it make sense 
and that should listen on that part. There you go, listening. And now we'll connect to that part and send. Which is just as easy as what we did before, pretty much the same syntax. And the part number. 10,000. And this time the less than operator to send. And the file name of what we've just created. Just a quick check over I've typed it okay. Yep. And that. You can see the connection's made. And we'll just give it a minute. Make sure it has successfully transferred. should have transferred now. Just do a quick DIR because we've transferred to this directory. As you can see at the bottom of the file, look at my cursor, received txt into that directory, the date and the time. So that worked pretty well. Nice demonstration there. Clear the screen. Right, now what we're going to do is something a little bit more exciting. Uh, we're going to be using Netcat as sort of a backdoor, really. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do, first of all, a bind shell, um, which basically binds an application to the connection. So, what we're going to be doing in Windows is we're going to be binding a CMD EXE command prompt so that when we connect on our Linux box, we receive the CMD EXE. Oops, not too, it's not too technical, but it's pretty good. So, all we have to do is in our Windows box, again, all as you'll see, all this syntax looks very familiar, and again, I'll mention it again, check out the blog, it's goes into quite a lot of detail and it'll help you understand what's actually going on here. I'm going to use the e-switch which just tells Netcat to bind something. In this case, CMD EXE. Just wait for that to say it's listening to make sure I've typed it correctly. There we go. Right. And it's just a case of now in our Linux box connecting to that part on the IP address. Dot one two three. see the connections made and there you go Microsoft Windows version 5.1.260 and it's sent us as you can see here where my mouse is circling the directory has now been sent to our Linux box so we can do some commands on here like dir the directory just for an example and there you go can see that we can access and we get the same permissions that that user is on. So if that user is an administrator, we get the administrator positions, um, permissions should I say. Right, so we'll quick demonstration of that. Screen there. Clear the screen there. Right, now we're going to do a reverse shell. This is pretty much the same, but obviously just the reverse. We're actually going to send a command prompt 
from Linux to Windows just the other way around so again on this time we'll be firing up Netcat on our Windows box setting up a listening port on the same port number by the way you can use pretty much any port number you want I just use that for simplicity obviously you can't use one that's already bound by one by an application but just use this one if you need to so anyway we're starting up a listening port You're listening on any. Right, and this time in Linux, we'll send the equivalent of CMD EXE, which is bin bash. Which is just the same as a CMD, it's just the Linux equivalent. So we're going to be sending the bin bash. So fire that up. And there we go. It's connected, it's not really shown as much. But see if we can. There you go. LS pretty much showed us exactly what we want. If come big there you go, it's just showing these the Linux commands we're typing in to our Windows system. And that's and that's the reverse shell. So as you can see pretty flexible in what it can do and it's pretty easy as well. Um, you really need to learn how to use a netcat uh, if I'm going to be honest and and in the more advanced videos you know the idea is to do this automatically um, via code execution um, which I will be going into more detail in one of my advanced videos uh, anyway check out my other videos please subscribe to my blog and my channel and I'll see you next time for another video thank you